and I already spoke on Kundalini yesterday for two hours. Those who want to hear my speech can uh, arrange it with Mr. Swai and can come sometime and listen to it. Uh, but today, after telling you about the three powers which govern our autonomous nervous system, and the seven centers which look after all our autonomous behavior. which are the milestones of our evolutionary different stages. The centers carry the symbols of deities who are responsible for our evolution, who have helped us to evolve by leading us, by giving us a leadership. The whole action has been Sahaj. As I have told you yesterday, Sahaj, Saha means with, Ja means bond, bond. In a sea, the complete map of the tree and all the trees that are coming in future is microscopically placed. In the same way, in our being, the complete map was placed. We have crossed quite a long distance to be human beings from the state of amoeba or even earlier. Today I am going to tell you about what lies around the normal human consciousness. We have to understand man in his complete totality. It is very necessary to know all that is unknown because whatever that is unknown is not divine. We should not mistake everything that is unknown as a divine force. And to understand the complete totality of man, you have to open your mind. Listen to me like a scientist would listen or understand a hypothesis. And later on, if you are realized, if you are, that is a very big if. With some people, with some people it is not. You all can testify, you can find out. But as a scientist, you must have an open mind. If you are a fanatic, even if you are science-obsessed person, you cannot understand. Science does not know anything of love. It does not know anything of religion. It is not, does not know anything of incarnation. But it can be proved today that there exists a force which is the synthesis of all the forces that are working. And there exists the all-pervading power 
of divine love. But for that, you have to be a subtler personality. With this gross human attention, you cannot realize it. You have to be a subtler being. And to be that subtler being, you are already blessed with a mechanism that works out this happening spontaneous. It is Sahaja, spontaneous. Effort. Somebody has to trigger it. Yesterday I have told quite elaborately all the chakras and their names and their deities and all the three forces. But today I am going to tell you what lies beyond these lines, beyond the human awareness. <coughs> is a subject of psychology, you can say. Though psychology is such a child science and the knowledge is so limited because you are probing from outside. It's an objective knowledge in the sense that you come from outside and see things. You grope at something, you say, this is this. Then you grope at another thing, you say, this is this. You have heard the story of six blind men trying to understand an elephant. As I told you yesterday that there can be a method by which you can put the light on and one can see clearly the complete, the total picture of man. <laughs> In this picture I have not been able to show that part. But in the human mind, as you all know, there are different stratas of consciousness. Now you are listening to me, paying attention to me, your chitta is towards me. This attention is the conscious mind. You know that. You are conscious of what I am speaking. Moment to moment you are listening to me. This present moment now, at this moment, this moment as it is, it's slipping, is becoming the past and the future is coming in view. Every moment is disappearing and a new moment is coming. You cannot stop the present. You cannot stop your attention at present. Now, to be at this moment, you cannot be. That's the difficulty. You either think of the past or of the future, but you cannot think of the present of this moment. So, we have our past and our future in a simple word. The past they call it as subconscious mind. Subconscious mind, they call it as psyche sometimes. I don't know what do they mean by psyche, they are so confused. But we have a subconscious data in which we store all that we collect, experiences, conditionings, everything. This work is done by the left hand side channel known as Ida Nadi, which is worked by the power of. Mahakali. Now this word should not shock all the English knowing scientists. This Mahakali power works. The storing of all the experiences, all the thoughts that are coming to you from the present into the past is done by Mahakali power. Thinking of the future, planning of the future, organizing the future is done by the right hand side power of Mahasaraswati which at 
two with Pingala Shana. In the gross form, they are expressed left and right sympathetic nervous system. But for a doctor, both the systems act simultaneously. They are so interconnected that it is very difficult for them to verify two different functions which are allotted to them. Because the ways and methods are so gross. The left side attends to our emotional being the lower left side to our physical, we can say psychosomatic side, the right side, the lower to our physical being and the upper right side to our thinking. The center channel of Sushumna is a completely independent system which works out our sustainer. In the beginning, when a person wants to drain, he wants all the parasympathetic act activities are performed through the subtle action of this channel known as Sushumna and the power that acts <coughs> is known as Mahalakshmi. This power evolves us. It gives us dharma, is a sustainer. The complete periodic table, if you have studied chemistry, is amazingly organized. The carbon is placed as a tetravalent element with four hands, just like a Ganesha. I do not want to go into the details of the periodic table, but it is so well organized that every atom of every element has to have the large circle with eight protons. If they are less or if they are more than four, they either become the negative or the positive element. What a tremendous planning it is. And when we say there is no God, we must understand such a tremendous planning could not have been achieved by just chance. It doesn't work out by that law of chance. All right, forget about God. Because suddenly if you talk of God, the scientists get a shock. But He exists. And these are His three powers which perform these three actions in our being. By the first, we build up our past. By the second, we build up our future and by the center, the Sushum Nanari, we exist in the conscious mind. The problem of future and past is created for human beings by a special method. As I told you yesterday, that this brain assumes a shape of a prism and that when these powers enter into the brain on both the sides 
they lose part of it. The one that enters from the right hand side passes to the left hand, losing something on the left hand side. This one is the Mahakali power, which loses outside. This one is the reaction to the past. You see someone, I see this gentleman, suddenly I remember of my past experiences with him. The whole past of him comes to me through that past. And as a reaction I develop a superego, a conditioning in my brain, which I have shown on the other side like a balloon. I'll give you a simple example to understand a superego and an ego, how it develops in a little child. A child is nursed by the mother and he is in complete joy, one with the mother, enjoying full. Suddenly the mother removes the child from one side to another side. He doesn't like it. The child doesn't like it. And he puts down his foot there. That is the development of ego. He has certain Ego develops gradually on the left side in the brain, but comes forward. When the child is then corrected by mother, she says, don't do, don't do like this. He is conditioned. By that he accepts it. And the superego as a reaction develops on the right hand side of the brain from this and covers it gradually at the age of about 12 years because language is another way by which they are strengthened. And here when they meet completely, a man is made into an egg, an articulation takes place. Everyone develops a separate personality. He is Mr. So-and-so, he is Mr. So-and-so, he is Mr. So-and-so. And the misidentification starts. There are many misidentifications we suffer from. We call them mithya. We know they are mithya, our name. I have known people, somebody's name was Dharamdas and he was the greatest Adharmi ever born. <coughs> there are so many misidentifications, we are attached to our name. If somebody says that you, Mr. So-and-so, you are a very bad man, one feels very hurt and bad, his ego again comes up. What do you say? This was my name. We are attached to so many misidentifications all our life. The mithya starts collecting and we become covered with so much of that misidentification. Our ego and superego completely overlap all our lifetime. So the ego is created as a byproduct, I can say, or you can say by the activity of the right hand side channel, the fumes of that activity like in a factory, you see, are collected in the ego. And the activity of the left hand side collects the superego and that's how you have ego and superego developed in your brain. So that is how the human being is. He has got his Mahakali power which is looking after his subconscious activity. His Maha Saraswati power, which is looking after the supraconscious activity, and his Mahalakshmi power, which is looking after the conscious activity. 
Now, there are regions which lie beyond it, about which we are not aware. On the left hand side, beyond the Mahakali region lies the collective subconscious mind. The collective subconscious mind, where all that is dead. is collected. That is the collective subconscious. Beyond the Mahasaraswati channel, beyond this region, lies the collective supraconscious mind. We are part of that also, though we are not conscious of it. We are not conscious of this, so we can call it an, it's still unconscious to us. Now, beyond the central path of Sushumna, beyond the conscious mind lies the collective consciousness. That is the all pervading consciousness, which we know as Satchit Anand is all pervading. Below the <coughs> Muladhara Chakra, which I have shown you there, down below, lies the most fearful area of hell. It exists. It is there. We may be not believe in it, but it is there and it can be proved. In the collective subconscious, as I have told you, when we die, we get into it, normally, not abnormally, but normally. Those people who have been extremely unhappy in life, who have been tortured and suppressed who have been made very miserable and have a malice burning in their hearts. When they die, they still have the vindictiveness and they want to make everyone else a miserable personality. They can't see happiness around. Such people, even when they die, they linger along in this area which is not gone into the collective subconscious. The collective subconscious receives a normal personality who has just accepted death as a transition. Actually, when we die, we really do not die. Only part of us, the earth element drops down and part of the water element also. But the rest of the elements that form this body, the different koshas, plus the Kundalini that goes out and the Atma that guides it, all that put together as soul, you can call it, all that goes into the collective subconscious and starts growing smaller and smaller. Into the area of that collective subconscious where it is 
to be placed for getting smaller and smaller. But the people who die as I told you, as the great sufferers with great desires and lust, very depraved and debased people who indulge in alcoholism and drugs and sex, who make their life miserable, who are violent to themselves and not to others, who are not aggressive but are aggressed, who commit suicide, they do not go to the appointed place, they stick on around. And some of them are really busybodies. They try to torture other souls. <laughs> All the mental cases that you find in this world suffer from the obsession or the possession by these entities. We call them as Bhut and Pishacha. You may not believe it because people don't believe in Bhut. We believe it or not, but they exist. These people are not ambitious people, but they are sly, they are mischievous, but they are afraid. So they try to find out this type of people, they enter into the psyche of such people and they make them even worse, they make their lives miserable. And they make such a person absolutely abnormal. When the psychologists are treating such abnormal people, they perhaps do not know what they are up to. The psychologists, when they get in contact with such abnormal people, they themselves are influenced or contaminated, they catch from these depraved and debased, lusty, sexy people. And they themselves become so abnormal because they se seldom have any relationship with normal people. That they start putting up theories absolutely abnormal. An abnormal personality is made as a normal personality and is made to be accepted by everyone. So they start with a theory that you should not suppress your desires, you should become very expressive and absolutely liberated as far as these desires are concerned. All right, go ahead. But they are not aware of the other side of the human beings that those who do like this, can get into the other trap and can become egoistical. It starts as a trip of their ego then. They become so egoistical that they forget what is sin, what is God, what is holiness. That is what has happened in the Western countries. Perhaps maybe the war. In the war, so many people were killed like that. They must have possessed these people. And such patients must have gone to these psychologists and these psychologists must have come out with these unique ideas of psyche being conditioned if you tell them about religion.
psyche is conditioned, no doubt. If you all the time tell the child, don't do this, don't do that, the child gets conditioned, no doubt. If you discipline a person too much, he might get conditioned, no doubt. But if you are a model, you are sad. If the father and mother both are the model of goodness, then the child accepts it without being conditioned. This is the central path of evolution. That's why I say that the family is the most important unit of every nation. <coughs> All effort must be done to retain the holiness, the respect and the greatness of marriage institutions. That's why all the incarnations have been married people and even the gurus like Guru Nanak and all these people have been married and they have been leading a normal married life. You go to the West and you are surprised at the tomfoolery and the stupidity to which they are taking. You cannot believe how foolish they have been. We don't have to learn anything from them in this respect. They have broken their family, they have divorced their wife, all right? Now, women have divorced their husband. Ten men divorcing ten women, marrying each other all the time, ending up in a anathale and the children are taken to drugs. What a nice society. The husband comes home and wife has disappeared taking a divorce, saying, I, I didn't like my husband, there was no compatibility. And the psychologists are very nicely helping them to build up a society of chaos. And the religion has been thrown to wind because they think it conditions people. It will, if it is a false religion. If it is a separation, for example, Christianity never preached such things that these people are following. Christ never talked of sannyasa, of any kind. He himself was a great celibate, born personality. He was an incarnation. But his mother was married and he attended marriages. But the Roman Catholic started a suppressed type of institution where they preached complete celibacy. Martin Luther came in, he said, no, this is wrong, it should be spontaneous. He was correct. At that point he was correct, but he went wrong that he did not recognize Mother of Christ. That was the greatest mistake because from where do you get the sense of celibacy? From where do you get the sense of holiness? In what relationship? In the mother and the son. That's how Christianity had gone, has gone to dogs in that country. As I told you yesterday, we are making a picture of sex of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine such a picture? Can you tolerate in this country? So we have people who are teaching us, who are actually possessed. Most of the psychologists are possessed and they deal only with abnormal people and they cannot normalize these ideas for the normal people. But by doing that they have created abnormal personalities and you can find all kinds of absurd things in that country that a 90-year-old woman having a love affair with a 19-year-old boy, can you think of such a thing in this country? <laughs> it's a common thing there. There is a law in England, imagine a England is such a traditional place, that a father cannot have bad relations with the daughter. And 
that the mother cannot have with the son. A law. We don't need a law like that. I mean, we cannot have a law that you cannot eat the filth. We do not make law like that. I mean, human beings know that much. But they have a law. Now the trouble is they are asking, imagine, thanks to the psychologist, they are asking that this law should be taken away so that they should be made free to do what they like in this respect. What do you say to this? You can't believe it, but it is true. There was a minister here, Mr. V.K. Arvi Rao. He went to America and he gave me a terrible <laughs> experience when I was going to America. He said, don't go there. They will never understand you, Mother. You, they, please don't go. I said, what happened? He said, I went down to see my daughter. She was away, living away from the main city. So I said, I'll stay over here with her. So the landlady said, no, you can't do that with your father. She said, what? No, no, he can't stay. Any other man can stay, but not your father. She said, you can't sleep with her. She gave her a big slap. But this man said, just feel, where they think you is so weak. He cannot understand these things just now. They also never understood this. Thanks to these psychologists whom they have accepted. Thank God we do not know so much of English to read that psychology of theirs. The way they have ruined these innocent people by their preachings. They are worse than all the horrible preachers ever known, with a very little knowledge of this Kundalini on the left hand side, they have ruined such a great race, such great people. So many saints are born in that America and England. Oh, I weep to see all that. They are all ruined by these people by telling them these stories, which they call as freedom. And disciplining their thought was conditioning, but disciplining through a model they could not understand. Now, I will tell you how in our country also people have used these entities. We have had the greatest saints and the greatest incarnations in this country, no doubt, I agree. But we have the greatest thugs also, the two extremes. On the other side also, we have the supra-conscious people die. I'll put them together and tell you all the various types of things they do. The <coughs> People who are great planners and great, great sort of thinking all the time, what am I going to do this and what am I going to do that, and, and they cannot fulfill their desires and they are sort of absolutely identified with their desires and very egoistical. They are power drunk about women also. They want to have many women around. Women want to have many men around. All kinds of things, you see, all these complicated types. They are not satisfied with one wife or one husband sort of people, all abnormal. And also those who think that, like Napoleon, you see, this kind of egoistical people who think no end of themselves and try to identify themselves with their false ambitions like Hitler, when they die, they go to the other side on the right hand side, the supra They are very dynamic people. And they are the people who are very aggressive. They can also possess you. And you do not know how you get possessed by them. For there are two types of people. One the depraved and another the aggressive. So the thugs who are always waiting for an opportunity to learn use these entities for their own purpose. You want me to tell how they do it? That would be a bit too much. They have a way, they work in the smashanas. 
यू नो एज अ भूत विद्या स्मशान विद्या प्रेत विद्या आई नो एवरीथिंग बट यू नीड नॉट नो दे कैप्चर दोज एंटिटीज एंड कंट्रोल दैम बाय कंट्रोलिंग सम ऑफ द पार्ट्स ऑफ द बॉडी स्पेशली द स्कल एंड ऑल दैट वी हैड वन आनंद मार्ग यू नो दैट एंड मोर विल बी कमिंग फॉरवर्ड यू सी दैम वन मास्टर दे विल बी एक्सपोज ग्रेजुएट so these people capture the entities in their power some the supra conscious and some the subconscious and they try to capture the people to that we have had say ravana Ravana had a capacity to hypnotize all hypnosis, all uh, what you call this uh, ESP. All these extra things are done by these entities who can be good, can be depraved, can be very bad. In London, there is a, a an organization known as Late. Dr. Lang International Curative Center. Late, he is dead, but the curative center is working. This Dr. Lang, when he died, <laughs> he had discovered some things which he wanted that he should implement immediately. I mean, this is written in their pamphlet. Imagine, it's open. Ah, eh? they are not making sort of a thuggy. They do not call it God and all that. Thank God. Others call it God, but they openly say no. It is not. It is a spirit. so the spirit of dr lang entered into the body of one soldier fighting in vietnam this they have written already on that pamphlet is on my own and that spirit told this man that you go and tell my son that i am so and so and that you open the clinic the surgery so the man possessed with the spirit went down and told the son and he was taken aback but he gave him such secret information that the son had to accept this information and they opened the late dr lang curative international center so the thing started work many doctors who died with this kind of behavior also started working through that organization so now they would say that if you are suffering from some disease you let us know we'll give you the time that time we'll work it out exactly on that day that time the man would start shivering hu 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 jaise bhoot aaya ho something entering into their body and the person would get rid of it probably but after 5 6 years that man would rattle like a junkie car the nerves were completely finished I have had many patients from so called Dr. Lang's horrible institution, and it's very difficult to cure them because they have such horrible, horrible, depraved souls that they do not want to leave the body of these people. You can use these spirits for many tricks. is a very common thing in our group there was a lady who was a disciple of some sort of a man like this who used to carry a snake around and all that she came to me i gave her the realization quite all right but she was like this not all right so i told her you have to give up this horrible guru of yours and your ambition to be one of those so called people with power if you accept it then only this realization will stay otherwise it will be sad she would not listen to me while going to america i told her madam be careful you will get those powers so you should not accept them she said no i will never accept i do not want these dead powers i do not want this i want the supreme i want the parama i said all right keep it but she started getting some kunku out of her hand and some rice out of her hand that made her think is a good idea she started her center now 
giving away things, she started showing all sorts of magical things. It ended up by giving the number of the horse that is going to come. She used to have a big stick in her hand. She used to beat people when they came to her. She became a satanic person. Horrible face. Such horrible face she had. I mean, I could not recognize her when I came back. When they told me, when they told me that this lady is doing all these miracles, I was most embarrassed. I didn't know what to do and she had put up my photograph itself. And I had disappeared from the photograph long, long time back. When I came back, you know, she called me in her house. She brought thousands of people. For such a people, there are thousands because you can tell horses number naturally. You see, here I have less, but that lady had thousands. And she washed my feet and did all that. I was so embarrassed. I could see in her house all those entities moving very nicely, jeering at me. How they have captured the woman. So I told her when she came to me that these are not your powers. And she got a shock of her life. I said, now you say what you know before in my presence. So she started telling another person, you have a house like this, you have like that. He said, no, no, nothing of the kind, it's all wrong. So he told it to so she told it to somebody else who was sitting there, that in your office there is a man of this name. He said, nothing of the kind, it's all wrong. So she just fell at my feet and said, Mother, have you taken away all my powers? I told her, Oh, my child, if they were your powers, I would have put you on my head. I would have loved you, kissed you. But these are not your powers. These are the powers of somebody else and they have disappeared like that. She got even worse and she said, Mother, please get rid of them. But then, when she went back home, all her thousands of disciples waiting there to know all these things. You know, what a temptation! She went on and on, and now she is in the lunatic asylum. And all her disciples will be filling up that Thana, I think, Thana hospital very well. Some of the ones who were affected by her came to me. I didn't know what to do with that. Such a headache for me. You can work them out in so many ways. Not only by this, but there are so many ways by which you can use these entities. But for a normal person who is sitting down there, suddenly I get a snake in my hand. Oh, Mataji is the most powerful person we have With my own eyes I have seen. I met an ambassador somewhere. Outside he was wearing a nickel thing in his neck. And he was singing the praise of the man who has given them. I said, what for a nickel? At least you should have had a diamond. After all, you are an ambassador. He got a little, you know, hurting there. <laughs> I said, you are the cream of the nation like a fool. You are running after these nickel things. Did you go to ask him for these things? He said, no, I went for Supreme. Then I said, why don't you throw it on his face? There's another one who came to me. He has got a diamond ring. Rich man, very, very rich. I said, how many diamond rings you have got? Only the rich, huh? Otherwise, why don't they solve our economic problems? Easy thing, bring diamonds, solve the problems. Now the scientists, if they want to know how am I to tell them there are boots, they are not going to believe me. So they bring out, this gentleman came to me with a diamond ring, oh, this is the diamond ring I've got. I said, well, man, now what do you want from me? I haven't got diamonds. He said, no, mother, I just asked him for the supreme. Then why did you take the ring? You can purchase the ring in the market. How many do you have? He says, I have many. Can you purchase God in the market? He is a smuggler, he is everything. And the Guruji has no objection. Guruji himself drinks whiskey. And the gentleman, he is a great worshipper of the Guruji. He also drinks whiskey. Guruji does not mind as long as he passes on two or three bottles of 
फॉरेन विकसित हुए एंड देन ही कम्स टू माता जी सो माता जी आस ना वाई मी सर वॉट एम आई टू डू अबाउट इट सर माता जी आई है प्रॉब्लम आई से वॉट्स द प्रॉब्लम आई एम लूजिंग लॉट्स ऑफ डायमंड वॉट अबाउट योर वाइफ ओ शी इज कम्प्लीटली डेडिकेटेड टू हिम एंड शी गोज एंड स्टे इज देयर फॉर मंथ्स टूगेदर शी इज नॉट बॉदर अबाउट द हजबेंड अबाउट द चिल्ड्रन अबाउट एनी थिंग ओ शी हेज डेडिकेटेड हर सर टू द गुरु जी सो द वाइफ वॉज ब्रॉट टू मी लेडी इज कम्प्लीटली पजेस्ड ओ गॉड आई से नमोट अमाई टू डू विथ दिस वुमन वॉट क्वेश्चन अम आई टू आस्क देन आई टू काउट हर भूत Did lots of things to come. She's a lady doctor. I asked her if you are a lady doctor, what have you been up to? She said, I don't know. Somebody inside me tells me these are all stones. Give this to Guruji. These are stones for you. I said, mad woman. If these things are stones for you, for a married woman, diamonds are stones. so they should be dust for that guruji of your to the is a sanyasi why are you giving him these stones and did you tell your husband she says no i never told him he was about to report it to the police and the guruji would have been in difficulty but despite all that and the husband getting heart attack thrice they came to me again for the curing of the husband diamonds disappearing but the wife cannot get rid of the gentle man at all they are so possessed very difficult and thousands of them will run after such a man because very easy to hypnotize even they can look at you and hypnotize hypnosis is a simple mass hypnosis which they have mastered which they are using on people and working it out this way and people are running after them and whenever you ask any one of them they will say no we didn't ask for diamonds why are you impressed by him did he give anybody realization anybody has got chaitanya does he talk of kundalini does he know anything about parasympathetic nervous system no 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 he just say that i am god very nice and we all should accept it anybody saying i am god there should be some praman this is one style there are many like this surprising christ was a man who of course nanak has written i must say nanak has written such a lot against them thank god i hope the sick people are not running after such people i hope so but kabir has written tukaram has written kabir has lashed these people with treachery and this and that lashed them completely but who reached kabir these pishachas these rakshasas have been lashed by so many poets of this country they have told not to go near these people who divert your attention from the subtle to the grossest thing but nobody reads <laughs> so they go to other styles of people now christ was one incarnation who has clearly told that you have nothing to do with spirit with the devil but all the christian nations are religiously spirit worshipers religiously in london you go four steps and you find one spiritualist sitting there i am not telling you false we have some english people they'll tell me you can ask them all kinds of spiritualists even among christians they are pentecostalists to get possessed and they say that the holy spirit has descended upon 
Tantric has started this in India about 6th century. It has gone to such a foolish nonsense. That in the temples of Mahalakshmi in Bombay, they are having this kind of a nonsense going on there. And when I told the trustees that you stop all this, otherwise I will not come to your temple to address, they would not. They said, how can we? That's how we are gather crowds. People, these ghatin women, these working women, they get possessed. They start doing hoo, 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 hoo. People come and ask them questions. That Mahalakshmi has some sense or not? That is she going to come to these ghatin women who are doing all kinds of things? There? Some of them are prostitutes. Is she going to enter into the body of these people to tell you the question, what your father is going to get tomorrow? Is that the interest of God? Use your brain. Why God should be interested in such useless worthless, momentarily existing things. How can you connect it with God? I cannot understand by what intellect you connect it. And very great scientists, you see, are trying to discover and investigate. That is the idea. So, we have types and types. I have told you in London we have many types. Scientology, another thing they started in America. God. But what is the ulterior motive of this? Is? One is power. One is money. It's all a money-making proposition. When I say that you cannot pay anything for your salvation, people get a shock of their life. They cannot understand a mother's love. They cannot. That a mother can work like this morning till evening just to give us salvation. They cannot think of a personality like that. Impossible. That she doesn't ask for that. Any? It is impossible for them to believe. In America I went there, people said that such and such person is charging $275 for introducing one booty <laughs> to people. What about you? Why don't you charge when you are giving, giving the reality? I said, how much can you give me? How much have you got? What is the value? You put me in the balance. Can you sell your mother? I said, you have asked me once, never raise such a question to insult me. All right. You have to build a place. Supposing we want to have a place for meeting place, all right. You have to pay for this pendal, all right. Correct money, have a pendal. But you cannot have realization with money. We have to understand one small thing. That supposing I say, all right, come my son, live in my house without paying any money, nothing, you just live like a parasite. Will you accept? Any one of you, will you accept? And these parasites are living on your money, other people's money. Every cloth that they have, every morsel that they eat, every house they have, Every Mercedes they ride belongs to others. The society which permits such parasites will get parasites. It is what we have deserved. Why should you pay for God? I cannot understand. Already we have had many of these pandits and these thugs sitting in like pandas. And then the archbishops of the thugs have come as Bhagwan and God, with all this special knowledge of how to be fooled. And we, the simple householders, and these the parasites who call themselves at the sadhus and the sannyasis, living on our earnings, 
Why should we pay them? Why are you paying to these sadhus and sannyasi? Sita ji has very clearly told that have nothing to do with kashayas. Nothing to do with the Bhagwa. And no sadhu should stay in a village for more than two days and one night. She has said no woman should have a man as a guru because Adi Shakti Sita herself was deceived by this horrible Ravana who is born today, who is a Bhagwan is this. You don't know him. You will know him by his trick, by the methods, the way he threatens Sita Ji that if you do not accept my proposal, I am going to make your Indian women naked. And he is doing it. And we are seeing it with our open eyes. Their photos are blown up and sold in America. And the fellow is a multimillionaire. And I don't know what the income tax is doing. It is a fact. They are very passive people, I must say, in this respect. Why can't we find it out? Is it our culture? This can be done also. Nice cabaret show arranged, free of cost. And people enjoy, you see, the talk very much because, after all, you see, in the name of religion and God, you want to bring prostitution? You want to kill the dharma? You want to make everybody a satan? No use killing these horrid people. They have been killed many a times and are again back here. I can only appeal to your senses and to your dignity that try to understand and rise. Then we see the other side. You see, there are many styles which I cannot go into details and nothing so important. Better to talk of God than to talk of these horrid people. <clears throat> On the other side of the human beings lies the supra-conscious, what they call supra-mantle and all these names are given. On the right-hand side, there are the people who are extra-dynamic exist. They are also used by some people. For example, it is better to give them, these entities, some names of God. For example, they will give a name, say, of Ram. We say, oh, we must take the name of Ram. We are taking the name Ram, 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 Ram. Now we must understand, what is our right to call Ram? Is he our servant? That we are going, oh Ram, come here, look after my father's health, give me food, supply this, do this. Is he our servant? He Sri Ram, the incarnation of God. You want to call him just like this? What is your word? Right? Call him Ram, Ram, Ram. Because the great saints have said, Sumirana Karo. So you are doing Sumirana. Is it Sumirana? Do you have that heart to do Sumirana? 